With us now is the Republican candidate for Lieutenant Governor in the Commonwealth of Virginia, E.W. Jackson. Good to see you. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks in. for having me. I know the days are getting short. The time is getting <laughs> tight. I yes. appreciate you making time for us. Thank you. By all accounts, you were not the favorite when Virginia Republicans convened in Richmond, I suppose it was, for the nominating convention that produced Ken Cuccinelli, Mark Obenchain, and yourself. Were you as surprised as everyone else that at the end of the balloting, you were the man? Well, I was not the favorite of the pundits and prognosticators, but I was the favorite of the people. And we felt very confident going in that we were going to be difficult to beat because of the tremendous response we'd gotten from all over the Commonwealth. Why are you running? Why is this a job you decided to seek? Because I love this country. I believe we're in deep, deep trouble. Uh, I believe the Commonwealth of Virginia is where the foundations of this nation were laid. And this is where, in my view, they must be restored. Individual liberty, personal responsibility, free markets, entrepreneurship, uh, quality education for every citizen, every citizen able to find gainful employment and take care of their families. I think this is the place where those sort of foundational principles have to be reinstituted. I know a campaign, a statewide campaign, you're covering a lot of real estate, trying to meet a lot of people, media, uh, fundraising, one-on-one -on -one with voters, et cetera. It's a whirlwind. <laughs> yes. Have you found time to sit down with the Attorney General to talk with Mr. Cuccinelli about, should you both win, how you would govern, what the priorities would be, what your role would be? Because sometimes lieutenant governors have a big role. Sometimes hardly they do anything. It varies depending on the people and the situation. Have you spoken? with Mr. Cuccinelli about that? Well, we have had a chance to talk, but, but I think the most important thing to stress is I'm my own man. Um, uh, we get elected separately. Uh, it's very important that I come with a vision for what I would do as lieutenant governor. Uh, he and I have spoken occasionally, uh, but there's been no sort of formula. Here's what you will do. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a free exchange of ideas. Uh, and after the election, if we're both fortunate enough to be elected, uh, I'm sure we'll sort of solidify that. Do you feel good about him as a potential partner? And do you get the sense that he feels good about you in terms of your views, your outlook on the world? Well, look, uh, I support the ticket wholeheartedly, and I believe that uh, my fellow ticket members support me wholeheartedly. Do you worry that the recent shutdown and its aftermath has hurt the Republican brand? Well, I opposed the shutdown from the very beginning. Forty percent of Virginia's economy depends upon DOD spending. A government shutdown hits Virginia harder than it hits any other state. I made that clear from the very beginning that that was not the way to go. I even got criticized because I suggested maybe we need a prayer meeting up there. We need divine intervention to try to bring people together and solve the problem. So uh, has it hurt Republicans? Uh, I think that in the aftermath, now that we're focused again on the Affordable Care Act, uh, I think people are looking back on that and realizing, while it may have been a mistake, it was done with the intention of trying to bring some fiscal sanity uh, to, to uh, the federal government and, of course, try to address the issue of the Affordable Care Act as well. There's a video of you from 2011, a different fight but similar issues, certainly similar players, where you're standing behind uh, Indiana Congressman Mike Pence and there's a shout of cut it or shut it cut it or shut it. In other words, if they won't cut spending, shut the federal government down. Have you evolved on this issue of how far to press the issue and, and whether a government shutdown to get your way is wise? Well, you know, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, uh, foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds. That was a different situation. I was in a different role. That was about spending. It was not about the Affordable Care Act. Uh, I think it was a mistake to try to resolve an issue that's got to be resolved at the ballot box by ending up with a government shutdown. Your comments about gay people have generated many headlines over the months. You told an interviewer yesterday that your views are being misrepresented, misquoted perhaps, uh, by your opponent in the media. How so? Well, look, my role as a minister is to teach the Bible. Um, now, the Bible has some, said some things that people in popular culture don't particularly like. Mm -hmm. uh, and I understand that. But that's not my role as lieutenant governor. My role as lieutenant governor is to serve all the people of Virginia. Uh, I'm a person who respects every individual. Uh, look, I make no apologies. I support marriage as a union between one man and one woman. I am pro-life. 
but I want to talk to people about issues and try to find common ground. But I'm not going to apologize for being a Christian or being mm -hmm. a minister or a Bible believer. You say you respect everyone. There's a video online from American Bridge 21. It's on YouTube, and it's a montage of things you've said. I want to uh, play it. You'll see a little graphic that they inserted in the middle, uh, but the, the montage is you. want to play it. Come back and give you a chance to talk about it. Here it is. I believe in the power of love. I've been teaching it for 30 years. Um, I don't treat anybody with disrespect. And many of these comments have been taken completely out of context. Homosexuality is a horrible sin. It poisons culture. It destroys families. It destroys societies. Their minds are perverted. They are, they're, they're frankly very sick people psychologically and mentally and emotionally. It's clearly wrong uh, that, you know, a, a male and a female were meant by, both biologically and physiologically and by God, in my humble opinion, to be together. No two males or females were ever meant to be together. Can you reconcile the notion of respect with what we just heard? Absolutely. First of all, let me just say that Again, I refuse to apologize for being a Bible-believing Christian. There are millions of us all over the Commonwealth of Virginia. No matter how much I'm persecuted for it, I will not, <clears throat> excuse me, apologize for that. But look, believing that marriage is a union between one man and one woman and having certain moral beliefs is not incompatible with treating all people with respect. Their minds are perverted. They are very sick people, psychologically and mentally and emotionally. It is clearly wrong. I mean, you're taking a yeah. group of people who uh, some would say want to love who they want to love in the in the in the privacy sure. of their home with the uh, respect and uh, protection that the law provides all couples when you say their minds are perverted you're, well, you're not well, talking can, can about I the ask you a question yeah, of course. have you ever read Romans 1 not lately. Well, okay. We well, ought to read it. And I hope that your, your viewers will read it because preachers you, all over the Commonwealth, I, I, I that, frame was it, not, that was not in a political campaign. I frame it in the okay. context of your statement that okay. you respect everyone. This, well, this won't just won't feel like Ro respect. Well, then Romans 1 won't feel like respect, but it's mm -hmm. what the Bible teaches. My role as a minister is to do that. That's not my role as a lieutenant governor. And what I resent is the idea that a religious test is being applied, that as a teacher of the Bible on Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings, for example, I'm disqualified from serving in public office because of my religious views. Who that means that? every minister, every Christian who believes in the Bible all across the Commonwealth of Virginia, all across America, we're saying you're second class citizens, you're not eligible to serve because we don't like what you believe because we ultimately don't like what your Bible or your God teach. I understand the difference between my role as a minister and my role as a lieutenant governor. I've got to serve gay people, straight people, people who believe in God, people who don't believe in God. I practiced law for 15 years. I understand the distinction, and frankly, it's an insult to suggest that I don't. I love the Constitution and the First Amendment. I will defend people's right to believe what they want to believe and to practice whatever religion they want to practice or not practice at all. That's my role as lieutenant governor. I want to put on the screen a chart that uh, the Washington Post uh, published recently. It's from a poll that sampled opinion of the Republican Party now in the wake of, 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 of the shutdown and, and, and simply this moment that we're at right now. And the, the purple is f people who view the party favorably. The, 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 the pink is people who view the party unfavorably. Among uh, the first uh, group is all voters. It's 3265. You're underwater there. Among independents, it's 2569. You're uh, quite underwater. Women, 2869. Non whites, 1287. White college graduates, 3169. Let me play for you, uh, as you digest those numbers, let me play for you a comment that uh, former uh, Congressman Steve LaTourette, a Republican from the battleground state of Ohio, said on the show here in that chair just recently when it comes to what it's going to take to win elections and sort of from his perspective, where the party needs to get versus where it is now. I'll play the comments for you and okay. then we can come back and talk about them. I happen to think we're having difficulty because when you wake up on election day, uh, we're having trouble with women voters, we're having trouble with gay voters, we're having trouble with Hispanic American voters, we're having trouble with African American voters, we're having trouble with Asian American voters, and we're having trouble with people in organized labor. I don't know how you win an election when you write off 
those groups and just say, well, if we could just get, you know, a few more angry white guys in their 50s to turn out to the polls, we could elect the next president of the United States. And so that's the, that's the competition. And they truly believe it. I don't, you know, I'm not being critical of their beliefs other than they're wrong. Uh, but until we solve that problem as a party, we're going to continue to have problems. Is the tent big enough, Urban Jackson? Well, first of all, I'm my own man. I don't do the bidding of the Republican Party. Uh, secondly, my wife and I have raised two beautiful, independent, thoughtful, professional, well-educated daughters who think for themselves. They're strong women. They were never once told by me they're things you can't do because you're a woman. So I think people need to evaluate the principles of the individual, not just look at the party. And I think that's what's happening. We've got black supporters. We've got Hispanic supporters, people who would, you would not normally associate with support for the Republican Party, but they're supporting me because they're believe in me. If you had a chance to roll back or reduce Governor Bob McDonald's transportation plan as Lieutenant Governor, the potential tiebreaker in the Senate, would you take it? I, I would certainly seek to roll back the taxes. Uh, I'd seek to find ways of addressing our transportation problems without putting more tax burdens on Virginians because I think we're taxed enough already. I think uh, that we, we've got an economy that is not as robust as it needs to be by any stretch of the imagination. And I'm concerned about what's going to happen with the federal government upon which we're very, very dependent more than any other state. So so, yeah, I would always be looking for ways to reduce taxes. I've made a commitment to my supporters. I won't raise taxes. Warren, you we uh, up on a break in 70 seconds. Would you support a background check to close what some call the gun show loophole? Well, see, the, really, there is no gun show loophole. Um, and I'm always reluctant to look at things that are going to inhibit law-abiding citizens from owning firearms. Any licensed firearm dealer who goes to a gun show has to do a background check to sell a firearm. Most gun show dealers are now restricting private individuals from having transactions within their gun shows. But here again, the Second Amendment was put there to so, protect the rights and, and of law-abiding citizens to own firearms. Even though it's a well-known provision, fact that someone with issues <clears throat> can go get a gun and, and walk out. They could go get a gun from a private individual anywhere. I mean, they could do that on the streets. They could do that, you know, anywhere. But, but I think we need to make sure that law-abiding citizens, and that's what populates gun shows, can get them. E.W. Jackson is the Republican candidate for lieutenant governor in the Commonwealth of Virginia election day this coming Tuesday. He's running against Democrat Ralph Northam. Thank you very much for Thanks your time. For having Great me. having you here. Hope to speak with you the morning uh, after if you're successful <laughs> on, on election day. Back with the program note right after this.